experience because it's new for us as well. Oh, good. Thank you. It, it, well, we didn't know how many you would have, whether you would have yeah. anybody or whatever, because the weather is not exactly walking weather. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a parade on the Michigan Avenue. Yes. It's blocking the traffic. Yeah, and you know, Chicagoans yeah. are Chicagoans. Now, are you all from different places? Where are you from? Barrington. Barrington, yeah. Very far north. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm with her, but I, I split time between here and Fort Worth. This oh, is, my this goodness. Is so a, this, is, this is a spring morning. This is Worth. just fine for you. I, so thank you. This is something for Every person who came in and I said, oh, you're so brave to be here in the heat. I finally couldn't stand it anymore. Oh, it's, well, we have relatives of Little Rock, so we know what yeah. Fort Worth is like. And, and so yeah. welcome. And then where are you from? Chicago. From Chicago. Yeah. So, well, good. Hearty souls. So it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Well, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Ann Boyd, and Roy is with one of our artists as we speak, so he's back in the office. And, of course, you were in very good hands this morning with Marcus. And Marcus had to do all of the installation of this exhibition, and then he, married, he wears many, many hats, and all the other things that he does with the gallery. But primarily, the huge thing that he does for us that we cannot do ourselves is takes care of the website. And the website, as far as a commercial gallery goes, has made a huge difference in our business. Mm, so, so as much as we love what we do, the business end of it is very important because without the business yeah. end, we wouldn't have our doors open. So any gallery takes three things. The first thing is it takes a director with a good business sense and certainly an eye. If you don't have a focus in your gallery and it's all over the map, then people are confused when they come in and they don't know quite what to expect and so therefore there is a lot of a continuity with that. Then the second thing you need to have, of course, is the artist. And we've been in business since 1972. So because of that, it's been a long time and our idiosyncrasies are now coming through. Roy has had the business aspect, he has had the eye over all this time. But now, because of being in business for such a long time, we've expanded our focus from pure abstraction to we do have two figurative artists, and then this is a brand new artist with us. And it's hard for us to take on new artists because we do have so many uh, people that we are committed to that it's hard to fit them into what our schedule would be. But when Roy sees something that he really falls in love with and he really would like to have it in his own living room, then he goes beyond what our focus of pure abstraction is. And of course, the third thing that you need is you have to have the collectors. Without the collectors, as I just said, you would not have your doors open, you would not be able to present the art. So it is a threefold kind of an experience, and we've been very lucky all these years to really appreciate how the gallery business works. So on to this wonderful show. This is the work of William Steiger. William has a wonderful background. He even lived in Illinois for a while. He was up in Winneka uh, as a, a teenager. But he has lived in several different places across the United States and for, uh, for a period of time, definitely in California. So his undergraduate work and his graduate work, the first graduate degree, both came from the University of California in Santa Cruz. But then he went to Yale for his MFA. And while he was at Yale, he expanded his, his great love for what architecture is all about and what the meaning of architecture would be beyond just what an architect, and of course there are so many different kinds of an architect, but just beyond what the building aspect would be and the engineering aspect, also all of the intricacies of fine art and graphic design that come within that. So part of his MFA, of course, he was able to take other courses besides uh, his MFA courses that he was taking that were architect architecture courses. And it was very interesting because during Neocon this year, we had several architects who came in from uh, the time that they were with William uh, getting their, beginning their degree and, uh, in New Haven, and some were still living in New Haven, and they had successful architecture businesses. Mm -hmm. But they were so thrilled to know that William has done with his career what he has done, because he worked with them, even has worked with architecture firms, and he's done graphic design in his past. He is now doing his work full time 
And one thing to keep in mind as we look at some of the images is this is all done freehand. There is no taping done. There is no kind of a rule that is applied in any way, a ruler or a <laughs> tape or whatever. And so just to think of what his control is besides what his beautiful design and his beautiful painterly aspect is, puts him a step ahead of what some other artists do with their craftsmanship. Because using tape is one thing, but doing this with, the, with that freedom in your hand is quite another. Mm. Also, it is the purity of the canvas that is so important. Now, he can do that readily with his beautiful prints, and he does do beautiful uh, aquatent etchings. But with using a canvas and using all those materials, the pristine kind of a presence of something that is so much related to a very great artistic sense, but he gives it warmth and he gives it activity is quite a different issue. And one thing that, because he is so new to us, this is the first time he'd ever been in the gallery when he came for his exhibition on June 1st, and Marcus and uh, another wonderful man who works with us, especially during installation time, Jeff, were wearing white gloves. And I know that William was so very pleased. He, he, he said he was pleased, but you could just see his face because the nature of your fingers anyway would be one thing. The other part of it is if there's any dirt that is applied, uh, it's irritating. And of course, it would mess up your whole kind, of your, your way of looking at the art. So he did supply us with uh, some uh, erasers for some of the surfaces, but some of the surfaces uh, the pure gesso ones or whatever, then they are not so easily cleaned. So it is something where we have a great deal of respect already for not touching the canvas. But the other is that this is really a true trial and a true test of how to manipulate and how to actually physically deal with the paintings. Now, as